This is Andrew with Missing Remote. In this video, we're going to walk through how to create a port forwarding rule with Unify. Uh, I'm going to be using a UDM Pro to do this, but we're also going to talk a little bit about what the differences are um, in the troubleshooting section between uh, using a USG with Unify and how the USG is different from the UDM Pro. So let's get started. Uh, if you want to create a port forwarding rule from the new user interface, uh, it's under gateway port forwarding. Unfortunately, there is a bug in the UI here where you don't get to choose which WAN interface it binds to, and it ends up binding to nothing, so it won't work. Uh, so if you want to create a port forwarding rule, at least for now, you have to go back to the classic mode, go to routing and firewall, port forwarding, and then you can create a port forwarding rule here. So you can see in this section, the interface, this is what's missing in the new UI. So that's you know pretty critical. So this is just going to be a simple HTTP rule. Um, I have uh, an SFP plus module in the UDM Pro right now, so that is WAN2. It's probably safest just to go with both, unless you have a more sophisticated uh, configuration with like WAN failover. Um, I leave the from alone most of the time. You can limit it, but that's a pretty narrow use case. Uh, 80 is for HTTP, and then we're going to forward this to an internal server, which is at that address. Um, we just want TCP forwarding, and then we're going to enable logging, because that's how you would figure out if it's working or not working. We're going to save it. Now, one might think that clicking enable logging actually enables logging, but it doesn't. Um, it enables the potential for logging. To actually enable logging, you need to go to site, check enable remote syslog server, and then also check log syslog and net console to this controller. Um, Optionally, you can also set up a remote syslog server, which is what I usually do. But just to keep it simple, we're going to check this box here, because then it logs to the, um, the Unify, or the USG, or the UDM Pro directly. And when we look at when we troubleshoot it, we're going to actually look at go to the the um, devices themselves and look at the message log there. But you have to turn on syslogging here in order to actually get logs. Uh, if anybody's interested in how one sets up a, a remote syslog server, I can certainly do a how-to. Just you know, let me know. I, I, there are lots of you know guides and things, so I didn't want to. And it would overly complicate this, so we're just going to skip that for now. So we want syslog and that console log to the controller itself. Um, you do need to have SSH enabled on these devices to get into them. Um, to do that on a UDM Pro, you go to the UDM's settings in the advanced and you turn on SSH and it'll ask you to put a password in there and then you're all good to go. Once you have that, you can log in to the device. This is the UDM Pro and this is the um, USG. One of the differences, and you can kind of see that here, is that the USG is a lot more intelligent about the messages that it provides. So it actually has the firewall rule and number written to the log. And we can see, if we were curious what that is, we can go to our USG, or sorry, our Unify setting that server that is using the USG. And you can see here is a WAN in rule of 306, 3006, which is our port forward, this port forward rule, which is a um, HTTPS rule. Uh, and that corresponds to this. So WAN underscore in dash, then the number 3006. And we're going to tail the var log messages file. So we're going to turn that on. And then we won't have anything here. 
And now on the USG, we don't get that level of useful information. So we're going to grep the source of the source IP that will be generating the traffic against our um, UDM firewall. And as you can see here, this is 192.168.20, which is the same as this uh, remote desktop session that I have that we're going to use to hit the, the um, HTTP server. So we're going to go ahead and turn that on. We'll just go here and reload this uh, site, and we can see we get a bunch of messages in here. A lot of this stuff is noise, and that's actually the, I, it's worth pointing out there. There's a ton of noise in this um, uh, messages file. The Unify doesn't really provide high quality firewall uh, logging, so you just get a ton of stuff. And if you have a more sophisticated installation and you're like in an enterprise setting, you're going to be using remote syslog, you're going to be parsing these log files, and you're going to be doing something, you know, well beyond the scope of what we're doing here. So we're just kind of working with what we have here, but it's kind of crap, but it's the crap we have. And unless you're willing to do quite a lot of work uh, to filter it down and make it m more pretty, um, you just kind of have to roll with it. So looking at the what we get here in the syslog we get the interface and it's important to remember that the interface interfaces start with zero so eth9 is actually 10 in the um, uh, UI in the for the UDM pro um, the out that's br0 which is almost certainly I haven't actually looked at the interface file for this Linux installation it's probably the bridge for, of all the different ports that are um, on the, the UDM is a MAC address. Here's our source, which is that uh, remote, remote in quote, server. The destination, which is our HTTP server. Uh, some stuff that is interesting, but not terribly critical for right now. The protocol, then the, this is the destination port. And so we know that this worked because we can see that the, um, source was passed to the destination on port 80. So our, our rule is working fine. So how does that, a similar rule like that look on a USG? So I just hit open up my phone, which is not on the network, and hit a web server that used uh, SSL. And we can see here, I'm going to wide make this a little bit wider. Actually, it won't help, but I'll widen it, and then I'll hit it again so that we can get it all on one line. There we go. So here we can see, you know, the date, we get the device. Here we get our rule. It's a WAN in 3006-A. Uh, what interface it's on, what interface it's going to, which in this case is a, is a VLAN. So it's actually quite a bit more interesting of a configuration but that doesn't really change anything uh, the MAC address the source which is a publicly accessible IP address the destination which is the server that it's getting routed to and basically the same information beyond that so here because we get this the rule we can filter on the rule instead of filtering on something else that now none of this really helps us if the rule doesn't work uh, and, and in that case, you need to go turn on WAN resolution. And to do that, you go back to your network, you go to your firewall rules, routing a firewall, firewall settings, and you have to turn on logging for WAN rules. Because you might notice these rules here, these are the default rules, you can't edit these. So you can't actually go in here and turn on logging on a per role or per rule basis. You have to go in here to do it. And well, actually on the on a 
USG and an older Unify pre-UDM Pro. You could actually change it on per rule. You just had to use the, uh, the config JSON file to do that. Um, you just can't do it through the UI. But this does it pretty much the same thing. It just does it for all of the default rules instead of just targeting one. So here we can see that all WANs rules are set up. And since we're grabbing the source IP, even if this rule didn't work, uh, we should still get something. So what we can do is we can go disable this rule. And we'll see what it looks like in the um, log when we hit the website with the rule disabled. So now it'll fail. So here's our log file where we get you know all that same stuff. But our out is now blank. So we know that it's not getting forwarded. So it didn't get mat it didn't match anything. The source is what we're filtering on. The destination is now the public. IP address of the UDM Pro. And because we can see that there's no out and the destination is the IP of the UDM Pro, we know that our rule, our forwarding rule, didn't get matched and so it failed. Uh, you can look at the firewall rules, like what's, what's hitting there and what's just going up against the uh, public IP of your UDM this way, but if you're looking at the, law, the raw logs themselves not in a very targeted way, the level of noise is so high that you, you do need to use, to get something useful out of it, you, almost, you do need to parse them and you know, look at it at a more aggregate level. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend doing this to look at who's DOSing your site or your uh, your Unify installation, or USG, or your UDM Pro. Um, There's just too much noise for th that to be useful, but it is quite useful to figure out, is my rule getting matched, my port forwarding rule getting matched? Um, what can I do to make it match a little bit? And then also just provide a little bit of detail into how this stuff works. Hopefully you found that useful. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Um, if you have any questions or comments or you have an idea for another video that would you think would be interesting, go ahead and leave that below. And um, I do read all of the comments. I don't always respond to all of them, but I do read them. Cheers.